We as futurists are not only excited about the possibilities that the future holds, but we are probably equally as fascinated by what could have been. This retro future, or sometimes also called paleo future, is highly interesting for multiple reasons. We can learn why things didn't develop as we had foreseen them and maybe learn from our mistakes in order not to repeat them. To think where humanity could have been if some of the visions of the past would have been turned into reality makes us sad, but it presents an opportunity to not repeat these mistakes. And one such consideration is to think about where humanity could be now if the original moon plans would have been set into motion and if money would have not been instead spent on wars and on the military industrial complex. If only a fraction of that money would have gone into space flight, we would be much further now, technologically speaking, but probably also culturally. And if we look at the original plans that Werner von Braun had for the moon landings, they make Apollo seem like a joke in comparison. So let's have a look at this alternate future, a future that could have been, and the incredible ambitions of a controversial man who dreamed of achieving the impossible. Hello dear futurists, welcome to Ultra Future, the channel where we're discussing all things future related. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started. Werner von Braun was certainly a very controversial figure. We shouldn't forget that he did work for the National Socialists and his V2 rocket was used to bombard London, killing over a thousand people. And many Jewish prisoners died while being forced to work on the rocket. So he certainly was involved in some really bad stuff and was therefore certainly a flawed person. However, when purely regarding him apart from moral considerations, it must be said that his visions for humanity's future in space were probably light years ahead of anyone else in those days. When the US brought lots of German engineers, many of them ex-Nazis, to the US to make them work on the US rocket program, a transfer which was part of a program called Operation Paperclip, von Braun did regret his actions as part of the German war machine and said that becoming an American was the happiest day of his life. He now could turn his engineering genius and his visions to positive use instead of war. From 1950 onwards, he worked in Huntsville, Alabama in the US's newly founded rocket development team, which resulted in the Redstone rocket. But even then, when America had not even yet a rocket capable of launching a satellite into space, he was already working on his moon landing plans. And these plans were utterly ambitious for the time. In fact, even today, they would still be extremely ambitious. He planned to build a large rotating space station, 76 meters in diameter, which would serve as an assembly platform for lunar expeditions. And his moon landings make what later followed with the Apollo missions really seem like a complete joke. He worked together with Walt Disney to visualize some of his ideas. I talked about Walt Disney's future visions in another video as well. Von Braun envisioned the first moon landings to be undertaken by 50, yes, you've heard that correctly, by 50 astronauts at once in three huge moon landers, two for the crew and one for cargo. Chesley Bonestell visualized these moon landers quite impressively I talked about Chesley Bonestell's retrofuturistic space paintings in the last video. These moon landers would have been 49 meters tall and 33 meters wide and driven by a rectangular array of 30 rocket engines. Just as a comparison, the SpaceX Starship moon lander, which is currently planned to return American astronauts to the moon in some years time, is 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide. So over 70 years after von Braun's plans, we are slowly catching up size-wise to what he had already planned back then. The Apollo moon lander looks tiny in comparison, being only 7 meters tall, so only one seventh of the height of von Braun's gigantic moon landers. Upon landing on the moon, which he had planned to be in the Sinus Rorus region, the astronauts would have of course immediately started to build a moon base. The emptied cargo holds of the huge landers 
would have been used as shelters. The astronauts would have explored the surroundings for at least 8 weeks, which would have included a 400 km or 249 mile expedition in pressurized rovers to the Harpalus crater and the Mare Imbrium foothills. Imagine if the ambition and will of von Braun would have been shared by others in the US government and if the moon landings weren't purely political, if they wouldn't have been purely a pissing contest against the Soviet Union. Imagine where humanity would be now. We would have had moon bases since the 70s. Imagine the incredible technological leaps humanity would have made. We would have landed on Mars by 1980, which was the target landing date which von Braun would have envisioned for his Mars landing plans. In that alternate reality, we would live on three different worlds since decades by now. The technological progress and the cultural impact of that technological progress would have been beyond anything we can imagine. Only now, 70 years after von Braun's plans, we slowly are reaching the point where maybe, just maybe, in the next 10 to 20 years, we might achieve something similar to what von Braun had planned many decades ago, mostly thanks to SpaceX's Starship. Without the over-the-top visions of Elon Musk, there would be no SpaceX and such visions would always remain that visions. It sometimes needs visionaries to make stuff happen, who can dream of things that go far beyond of what others would aim for. And so von Braun's gigantic moonlanders might still happen, even though in a bit of a modified form. Von Braun's landers, about which he's talking in this clip here, we can see a model of one, would have had space for a lot of astronauts, 25 to be precise. The spherical crew compartment would have offered a lot of space and would have been quite roomy indeed with five decks and enough space that even 25 astronauts would not have felt claustrophobic inside. The whole thing would have been propelled by hydrazine, held in, as you can see, massive tanks. Nowadays, such a fuel has luckily fallen out of fashion, because that stuff is really very toxic and oxygen-hydrogen fuel, turns out, makes much more sense for landing on the moon, as you can just create all the necessary components for refueling on the moon itself which would be quite difficult, if not impossible, with hydrazine. This whole landing would have taken place as Werner von Braun envisioned at some point in the 70s. But before that, he had planned to send a moonship around the moon, basically what happened with Apollo 8 in 1968 in our timeline. Of course, his moonship was also again really large with a spherical crew compartment similar to the spherical crew compartments of the moon landers. The only time we came even remotely close to such large crew compartments was with Skylab in 1973. That first American space station was surprisingly roomy, a lot roomier in fact than the ISS because even though the total interior volume was lower than the ISS, it was concentrated into one single space, therefore giving it a very large interior. We can only dream about what would have happened if von Braun's visions would have been set into motion and made real, but instead we got a very slimmed down version in form of the Apollo missions, and unfortunately even they were then abandoned at some point due to the short-sightedness of US Congress. And now we have to relearn and rebuild everything from scratch, but who knows, maybe in our lifetimes we will see things that Von Braun would have liked to see more than half a century ago. That is why we need visionaries who push the boundaries. If you are a futurist like me with a fable for huge moonlanders, then please like and subscribe since it would greatly help this still small channel. And please consider supporting me on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because that would allow me to make more and better videos. So then, dear futurists, see you in the future.